Hello and welcome to today's lecture. The topic for today's lecture is meditation and self-introspection. The main objectives of our topic are understanding the history of meditation, understanding the meaning and definitions of meditation, understanding the types of meditation, understanding history of self-introspection and understanding meaning and definitions of self-introspection. Let's start with the historical perspective on meditation. Meditation practices date back to approximately 1500 BCE. It has been an integral part of the earliest forms of Vedic or early Hindu schools in India. From 6th to 4th centuries BC, different versions of meditation practices had begun to develop in the Chinese Taoist and Indian Buddhist traditions. Notable figures as Philo of Alexandria, the Desert Fathers of the Middle East and Saint Augustine developed new forms of meditation practices in the West. Although it's not clear when exactly people began to meditate, Experts agree that the practice probably began many thousands of years ago before the birth of modern civilization. Several archaeological findings suggest that hunter-gatherers were practitioners of some forms of meditation as were the early shamans. Their knowledge was passed down orally from one generation to the next, helping crucially in laying the foundations of modern meditation. Meditation in the East In ancient religious traditions around the world, many forms of meditation practices can be found, but meditation practice as a formal component of a spiritual path is probably most closely associated with Buddhism. The Buddha, who lived and taught in Southeast Asia about 2600 years ago, founded a pragmatic path that inspired generations of practitioners to sit in mindful awareness and breathe their way to lasting peace. According to his teachings, meditative concentration is one of the three teachings that when practiced together result in awakening or enlightenment. The other two are proper ethical conduct and the wisdom of seeing things as they truly are. Zen is a popular school of Buddhism founded by the monk Bodhidharma, who in the 8th century traveled to China to teach meditation, either from India or Persia. From that point, his teachings developed into the lineage of Chan in China, being later exported to Korea as Sion, Japan as Zen, and Vietnam as Thain. All of these are known collectively as the Zen. In the same golden century as the Buddha, three other religions were born, all with their own approach to meditation. They are Jainism in India, founded by Mahavira, Taoism in China, founded by Lao Tzu, and Confucianism again in China, founded by Confucius. Jainism is a very ascetic tradition that places great emphasis on self-purification, self-discipline and contemplation as well as non-violence. The Jain meditation techniques involve mantra repetition, gazing, breath awareness, visualizations and self-inquiry. Taoism emphasizes the union with Tao or cosmic life or nature. Confucianism focuses more on morality and community life. Meditation was developed in this tradition centuries later with a focus on self-contemplation and self-improvement. It is called Jing So. These traditions are still alive today, although not as popular outside their home countries as Buddhism and Yoga are. Now we are going to talk about meditation in West. Eastern philosophy caught the attention of Western seekers and artists as early as late 19th century, but it wasn't until the mid 20th century that meditation became popularized in the West. In the 20th century, several famous Indian spiritual teachers migrated to the USA, including Paramahamsa Yogananda, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, who taught transcendental meditation, 
and Swami Rama. Likewise, representatives of several schools of Buddhism made their way to teach in the West, the main ones being Zen, Theravada and Tibetan Buddhism. Meditation and Science According to the scholar George Feuerstein, the first piece of scientific research on meditation happened in 1936 and the first one using the EEG was in 1955. The first collection of scientific studies on meditation was made in 1977 by James Funderburg, a student of Swami Rama of the Himalayan International Institute of Yoga Science. In fact, Swami Rama was one of the first yogis to be studied by the Western scientists. In the 1960s, he was examined by scientists at the Meninger Clinic where he demonstrated his ability to voluntarily control his bodily processes such as the heartbeat, blood pressure and body temperature which science had up until then considered being involuntary. In the early 21st century, meditation has become mainstream and greatly secularized. Even though spiritual meditation continues to exist, it is the secular approach to the practice or its benefits to the body, mind and wellness which is the reason for its ever-increasing popularity. Meaning and Definition of Meditation The English word meditation stems from meditatum, a Latin term meaning to ponder. Meditation can be used with the aim of reducing stress, anxiety, depression and pain and increasing peace, perception and well-being. Practicing meditation is no hassling task and it helps in bringing structural and functional modifications in the human organs including the heart and the brain with recurrent practice over a prolonged period of time. Meditation is practiced all across the world and diverse countries have given different names for the meditation that they practice. On regular practice, meditation is believed to assist in build-up of consistent, insensible behaviors of micro-dimensions that can possibly create distinguished constructive effects on physiological and psychological performance of the human entity. Meditation involves a complicated form of relaxation called the parasympathetic response wherein meditation techniques and other kinds of relaxation procedures assist in reducing the activities of the sympathetic component of the autonomic nervous system and promoting the activities of the parasympathetic component by reducing the release of stress hormones like cortisol. The process slows down the heart rate and increases the blood flow to the viscera. Now we are going to talk about different types of meditation. The first type is Buddhist meditation techniques. And the first among the Buddhist meditation techniques is the Zen meditation or the Zazen. Zazen means seated Zen or seated meditation in Japanese. It has its roots in the Chinese Zen Buddhist tradition of Chan, tracing back to the Indian monk Bodhidharma. In the West, its most popular form comes from Dogen Zenji, the founder of Soto Zen movement in Japan. Similar modalities are practiced in the Rinzai school of Zen in Japan and Korea. Another one is Vipassana meditation. Vipassana is a Pali word that means insight or clear seeing. Vipassana meditation as taught in last few decades comes from the Theravada Buddhist tradition and was popularized by SN Goenka and the Vipassana movement. Due to the popularity of Vipassana meditation, the mindfulness of breathing has gained further popularity in the West as mindfulness. Now the third is mindfulness meditation. Mindfulness meditation is an adaptation from the traditional Buddhist meditation practices, especially Vipassana. Mindfulness is the common Western translation for the Buddhist term Sati. Anapanasati 
or mindfulness of breathing is part of the Buddhist practice of vipassana or insight meditation and other Buddhist meditational practices such as the Zazen. One of the main influencers for the mindfulness in West is John Kabat-Zinn. His mindfulness-based stress reduction program, MBSR, which he developed in 1979 at the University of Massachusetts Medical School, has been used in several hospitals and health clinics from decades. The fourth kind of meditation is the loving-kindness meditation or metta-meditation. Metta is a Pali word which means kindness, benevolence and goodwill. This practice comes from the Buddhist traditions, especially the Theravada and Tibetan lineages. Compassion meditation is a contemporary scientific field that demonstrates the efficacy of the metta and related meditative practices. Demonstrated benefits include boosting of one's ability to empathize with others, development of positive emotions through compassion, including a more loving attitude towards oneself, increased self-acceptance, greater feeling of competence about one's life, increased feeling of purpose in life. Now we are going to talk about the Hindu meditation techniques, both Vedic and Yogic. The first one among the Hindu meditation techniques is the mantra meditation or Om meditation. A mantra is a syllable or a word, usually without any particular meaning, that is repeated for the purpose of focusing your mind. Mantras are used in Hindu traditions, Buddhist traditions, especially the Tibetan and Pure Land Buddhism, as well as in Jainism, Sikhism and Taoism. Some people call mantra meditation as Om meditation, but Om is just one of the mantras that can be used. A more devotion-oriented practice of mantras is called the japa and consists of repeating sacred sounds, name of God for example, with love. Some of the most well-known mantras from the Hindu and Buddhist traditions are Om, Soham, Om Namah Shivai, Om Mane Padme Ham, Ram, Yam, Ham, etc. Transcendental Meditation Transcendental Meditation is a specific form of mantra meditation introduced by Maharishi Mahesh Yogi in 1955 in India and in the West. It's a widely practiced form of meditation with over 5 million practitioners worldwide and there's a lot of scientific research, most of it sponsored by the organization, demonstrating the benefits of the practice. Third is the yoga meditations. There is not one type of meditation which is yogic meditation. So here it is meant the several meditation types taught in the yoga tradition. Yoga means union. This tradition goes back as far as 1700 BC and has as its highest goal the spiritual purification and self-knowledge. Classical yoga divides the practice into rules of conduct, yamas and niyamas, physical postures or asanas, breathing exercises or pranayamas, and contemplative practices of meditation, pratyahara, dharana, dhyana, and samadhi. The yoga tradition is the oldest meditation tradition on earth and also the one with the widest variety of practices. Here are some of the types of meditation practiced in yoga. The first one is the third eye meditation. This type of yoga meditation focusing attention on the spot between the eyebrows called by some the third eye or Ajna Chakra the attention is constantly redirected to this point as a means to silence the mind. By time, the silent gaps between thoughts get wider and deeper. Sometimes it is accompanied by physically looking with eyes closed towards that spot. 
chakra meditation. The practitioner focuses on one of the seven chakras or centers of energy of the body, typically doing some visualizations and chanting a specific mantra for each chakra. Mantras like Lam, Vam, Ram, Yam, Ham, Om, etc. Most commonly, it is done on the heart chakra, third eye and crown chakra. Gazing Meditation Fixing the gaze on an external object, typically a candle, image or a symbol or yantra, it is done with eyes open and then with eyes closed to train both the concentration and visualization powers of the mind. After closing the eyes, one should still keep the image of the object in one's mind's eye. This meditation is so important and powerful. Kundalini meditation. This is a very complex system of practices. The goal is the awakening of the Kundalini energy which lies dormant on the base of the spine, the development of several psychic centers in the body and finally enlightenment. There are however several dangers associated with this practice and it should not be attempted without the guidance of a qualified yogi. Kriya Yoga It is a set of energization, breathing and meditation exercises taught by Paramahamsa Yogananda. This is more suited for those who have a devotional temperament and are seeking the spiritual aspects of meditation. Another one is the sound meditation or Nada Yoga. Focusing on sound, it starts with meditation on external sounds such as the calming ambient music like the North American flute music whereby the student focuses all his attention on just hearing as a help to quieten and collect the mind. By the time the practice evolves to hearing the internal sounds of the body and mind, the ultimate goal is to hear the ultimate sound or paranada which is a sound without vibration and that manifests as Om. Another type of yogic meditation is the Tantra. Unlike the popular view in the West, most Tantra practices have nothing to do with ritualized sex. This was practiced by a minority of lineages. Tantra is a very rich tradition with dozens of different contemplative practices. Another type of yogic meditation is the pranayama or breathing regulation. It's not exactly a meditation but an excellent practice to calm the mind and prepare it for meditation. There are several different types of pranayama but the simplest and most commonly taught one is the 4444. This means breathing in and counting up to 4 holding the breath for 4 seconds, breathing out for another 4 seconds and holding empty for 4 more seconds. Breathe through your nose and let the abdomen and not the chest be the one that moves. Go through a few cycles like this. This regulation of breathing balances the mood and pacifies the body and can be done anywhere, anytime. The last type of yogic meditation is the self-inquiry or the I am meditation. Self-inquiry is the English translation of the Sanskrit term Atma Vichara. It means to investigate one's true nature to find the answer to the who I am question which culminates with the intimate knowledge of the true self of a true being. There are references to this meditation in very old Indian texts. However, it was greatly popularized and expanded upon by the 20th century Indian sage Ramana Maharishi. The third type of meditations is the Chinese meditation techniques. And the first among them is the Taoist meditation. 
Taoism is a Chinese philosophy and religion dating back to Lao Tzu. It emphasizes on living in harmony with nature or the Tao and its main text is the Tao Te Ching dating back to 6th century BC. Later on some lineages of Taoism were also influenced by Buddhist meditation practices brought from India especially from 8th century onwards. The chief characteristic of this type of meditation is the generation, transformation and circulation of inner energy. The purpose is to quieten the body and the mind, unify the body and spirit and find inner peace and harmonize with the Tao. Some styles of Taoist meditation are specifically focused on improving health and longevity. Another type of Chinese meditation is the Qi Gong or Qi Kung. Qi Gong is a Chinese word that means life energy cultivation and is a body-mind exercise for health, meditation and martial arts training. It typically involves slow body movement, inner focus and regulated breathing. Traditionally, it was practiced and taught in secrecy in the Chinese Buddhist, Taoist and Confucianist traditions. In the 20th century, Qigong movement has incorporated and popularized Taoist meditation and mainly employs concentrative exercises but also favors the circulation of energy in an inner alchemical mode. Another type of meditation is the Christian meditation. In the Eastern traditions like Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism and Taoism, meditation is usually practiced with the purpose of transcending the mind and attaining enlightenment. On the other hand, in the Christian tradition, the goal of contemplative practices is, one may say, moral purification and deeper understanding of the Bible or a closer intimacy with God or Christ for the more mystic stream of the tradition. Here are some of the forms of Christian contemplative practice. Contemplative prayer which usually involves the silent repetition of sacred sounds and sentences with a focus and devotion. Contemplative reading or simply contemplation which involves thinking deeply about the teachings and events in the Bible. Sitting with God A silent meditation usually preceded by contemplation or reading in which we focus all our mind, heart and soul on the presence of God. The last set of meditation techniques that we are going to talk about is the Sufi meditation techniques. Sufism is the esoteric path within Islam where the goal is to purify oneself and achieve mystical union with the Supreme Being or Allah. The practitioners of Sufism are called the Sufis and they follow a variety of spiritual practices many of which were influenced by the tradition of yoga in India. Their main techniques include contemplation of God or Murakaba. Sufi Mantra Meditation or Zikr, Heartbeat Meditation, Sufi Breathing Meditation including Five Elements Breathing, Bond of Love Meditation, Gazing Meditation, Sufi Walking Meditation and Sufi Whirling. Now we are going to discuss the prevalence of meditation. The 2012 US National Health Interview Survey found 8% of US adults used meditation with lifetime and 12-month prevalence of meditation use of 5.2% and 4.1% respectively. In the 2017 survey, meditation use among the workers was 9.9% up from 8% in 2002. Now we are going to move to the second part of our lecture, self-introspection. First we are going to take a historical look on self-introspection. The controversial nature of introspection stems from its use as a methodological tool by the structuralists who sought to create modern empirical psychology toward the end of 19th century. 
Wilhelm Wundt and others trained research subjects to examine and describe their own thoughts in an attempt to create a table of mental elements analogous to chemistry's periodic table of elements. This method of trained introspection was described by Edward Titchener as requiring impartiality, attention, comfort, and freshness. After 40 years of research, structuralists catalogued 50,000 constructs representing three major classes of elements, namely sensations, images, and affection, each of which was viewed as possessing four attributes, quality, intensity, duration, and clearness. The method of trained introspectionism ultimately became bogged down with reliability and validity issues, especially because training inherently colored the reports of introspecting subjects. The approach was criticized by the Gestalt theorists who argued that the overall organization of thoughts is more important than individual elements and by behaviorists who argued that behavior and not thought is the proper focus of scientific psychology. Over the next 50 years, these two approaches dominated Europe and United States respectively and the method of trained introspection was abandoned. Meaning and Definition of Self-Introspection Introspection is the examination of one's own conscious thoughts and feelings. Introspection is both an informal reflection process and a formal experimental approach, but either process can be undertaken by anyone with curiosity and determination. The process of introspection relies exclusively on observation of one's mental state, while in a spiritual context it may refer to the examination of one's soul. Introspection is closely related to human self-reflection and is contrasted with external observation. Introspection generally provides a privileged access to our own mental states, not mediated by other sources of knowledge, so that individual experience of the mind is unique. Introspection can determine any number of mental states including the sensory, bodily, cognitive, emotional, and so forth. Self-introspection involves examining one's own thoughts, feelings, and sensations in order to gain insight. Here are six ways introspection can be a positive tool in one's daily life. It allows us to notice negative patterns in our life. It keeps us focused on the bigger picture. It prevents us from worrying about things out of our control. It helps us to face our fears. It allows us to clearly define happiness on our own terms. And it allows us to make decisions based on our own conscience. <clears throat> now we are going to discuss uh, introspection and religion, our last subtopic. First, we are going to discuss introspection and its relation to Christianity. In Eastern Christianity, some concepts addressing human needs such as sober introspection or nepsis require watchfulness of the human heart and the conflicts of the human nous, which means heart or the mind. Neotic understanding cannot be achieved by rational or discursive thought, that is, by systematization. Introspection and Jainism Jains practice pratikraman, which in Sanskrit means introspection, a process of repentance of wrongdoings during their daily life and remind themselves to refrain from doing so again. Devout Jains often do pratikraman at least twice a day. Lastly, in Hinduism, Introspection is encouraged in schools such as Advaita Vedanta in order for one to know their own true nature. They need to reflect and introspect on their true nature, which is what meditation is. Swami Chinmayananda especially emphasized the role of introspection in five stages outlined in his book Self-Unfoldment. 
And with that, we conclude our today's lecture. I hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you very much.